now are linked to one massive event. That's all coming up on Impact. Welcome. Now, every year the Chinese-speaking world celebrates a creature from roosters, rats and rabbits to dogs and pigs. And over the last 12 months, it's been a dragon. Well, in 2013, one of the most despised and feared animals on Earth will take pride of place, the snake. Hundreds of millions of people are preparing to usher in the Lunar New Year this weekend. And if we look around you, some of those symbols and images that you can see, but also what might you hear? Well, in a moment, two performers will play some traditional Chinese music. But let's speak to them first. With me are the musicians Michael Liu and Owen Churchill, who himself was born in the Year of the Snake. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us here on Impact. It seems to me that you've got the instruments, though, the wrong way around. Owen, why have you ended up with a traditional Chinese instrument? Well, this is the, the hula so, which is um, it's a, a flute, a gourd flute from the south of China. Um, and I picked it up while I was studying in Beijing a couple of years ago. Um, and How it, did you just pick it up? How does that happen? Well, I was actually just walking down the street and um, came across an old gentleman playing the flute and started chatting to him and in a very typically warm Chinese way he invited me into his house and um, for a meal and then afterwards started teaching me the, how to play the hula su. Difficult to play? It's actually um, surprisingly easy to get a good sound from it, um, not to put myself down, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the reaction from Chinese people, particularly when you were playing it in China? They must have been so touched and thrilled almost. Yeah, I think especially um, when, you know, when you play a song that they're so familiar with and then they're always, always so thrilled to see people from outside China really getting into their culture and, it, and, uh, and spreading that knowledge with them. How about you, Mark? I recognise your instrument. That's just a flute, isn't it? Yes, it is. And how long have you been playing for? Oh, I've been playing it for about um, 16 years. And what kind of music do you play? Chinese music, Western music, what's your preferred? Um, mostly, because um, this is obviously this is a classical Western flute, so most of the music I play is classical music. And what do you think when you hear Owen play a traditional Chinese mu musical instrument? It's fantastic, it's really amazing. It's very interesting as well. Yeah, and Owen, uh, you were born in the year of the snake. You're wearing uh, red trousers, Indeed. so you completely buy into this. It's part of uh, what you Absolutely. see is your cultural landscape now as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you meant to, I think you meant to wear red to ward off bad luck in your year of the zodiac, so um, fingers crossed. And what were you looking forward to in the new year, Michael? Um, I guess it's just, you know, lots of amazing things and like hopefully I'll get more performances and concerts and stuff like that. What's yeah. the response when you are playing Chinese music here in London say? Are people very responsive to it? Um, yeah, I mean I think people are quite open-minded about things like you know um, the, the piece I'm going to play today it will be um, you know written by a Taiwanese composer but it's written in a Western music kind of style and it, so it's kind of like a, a fusion between the two cultures. And what about um, Chinese people who live here? It must be lovely for them to hear the sounds from home. Yes, definitely, yeah, because like, you know, every time when I, whenever I have a concert, there's always like a crowd, like, you know, from Taiwan and from China, and they're always really supportive. Oh, and what took you to China in the first place? Well, um, just a love for the culture, really. Um, I hadn't spoken Chinese before I started at university. Um, not the then, easiest of languages. No, <laughs> no, not <laughs> a walk in the park. Um, but yeah, and then after getting to grips with the language a little bit, I was sent to Beijing to study for a year and really got into the culture and the language itself. I always wondered if you were musical, if it made uh, Mandarin easier to learn because of its tonal. So I, yeah. I imagine if you're a musician, that might make it a bit easier. I have thought about that before, and I think it probably does help a little bit, having a, a musical awareness, yeah. So Michael, how do you rate his language skills? Um, yeah, he's very, very good. <laughs> he speaks really, like, perfect. OK. What is it that you enjoy most about the experience of, chi uh, of playing Chinese music as well as sort of mixing in some Western things as well, Owen? Um, well, yeah, the, the hula su is a really versatile instrument and I've played it with, um, you know, with tra other traditional Chinese instruments and also played it with more Western contemporary instruments and it works really well in both. And it's just been a really great experience to, to, to share the culture with other Chinese people and it's a, you know, obviously a good talking point as well. Well, thank you both for chatting to us. I can't wait to hear you play. I didn't hear the rehearsal, but everyone says it was fantastic, so we're in for a treat. But let's take you to China now, where hundreds of millions of people, equal actually to the population of Brazil, are on the move to celebrate the new year with their families. And as Celia Hatton now reports from Beijing, it is the world's largest annual migration of people. Mia. Xia Bisheng sells fur coats. 
But even though his business is booming this winter, he's still closing his shop for two weeks. Xia's leaving Beijing to return home to Anhui province. In China, we have an old saying, whether you have money or not, you should go home for the Chinese New Year. I just want to see my parents. Millions in China find jobs far away from home. The Lunar New Year holiday is their only break all year, and they're desperate to reconnect with their families. China's roads and airports will be packed ahead of this weekend's Lunar New Year. But most students and blue-collar workers choose a cheaper travel option. They come here to one of the country's railway stations to start their journey home. Over the holiday rush, a record 3.4 billion trips will be made on China's overcrowded train system. It's the journey everyone in China loves to hate. There are so many people, tickets are hard to get, says this student. There's no room to stand on the train, let alone sleep or eat, complains this man. Still, few here would ever consider canceling their trips. Going home for Chinese New Year is a matter of suffering through the journey to reach the destination. Well, as I promised, here is some music to kick off our celebrations. Let's join Owen now. Take it away, Owen. That was wonderful, Owen. Thank you so much. Well, uh, we're going to be telling you a little bit later about how Owen and Michael are going to be playing here in London. We're going to have Michael playing some traditional Chinese music in a moment as well. But let's go with John Sudworth now back to China. He got exclusive access to how Chinese people are going to be celebrating this year, particularly Chinese state television for this new weekend's New Year Gala program. Uh, let's have a look at John's report. <laughs> Backstage, there's a chance for a quick rehearsal for some very small performers about to face a very big audience indeed. Hundreds of musicians, actors and dancers are getting ready for one of the most watched TV shows on the planet. China's Lunar New Year Gala has been growing ever grander since it began in 1983. But this year, the directors have been ordered to produce a show more frugal in tone, in line with the recent crackdown on corruption and official extravagance. It's a rare intervention these days. China's diverse ethnicities always feature, underlining national unity, but direct political messages have been scaled back. It's a really a wonderful platform because everyone is watching it. And I think as a classical musician, this is a very nice place to share our uh, artwork. 
And normally, you know, we, we play only in the concert hall. And this is a, another stage that you can share probably with somebody who never heard classical music before. But it's really good, yeah. There are foreign acts too. This year, everything from Celine Dion to this Kenyan student. Um, I'll just sing the one that I'm singing, the one line I'm singing. It goes like that. <laughs> Such is the importance of this national TV moment that this is the first time ever that a foreign broadcaster has been allowed behind the scenes like this. We're told that the message of frugality this year will be reflected in fewer costume changes on the night and recycling some of the set and scenery from last year. It might be risky. Audiences already have other choices and critics ask whether the extraordinary 700 million viewing figure can be sustained. John Sudworth, BBC News, Beijing. Amazing scenes there, those little girls waving at the camera. Pretty magical. But let's bring you our second performance now, playing traditional Chinese flute. Here's Michael Lu. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Well done. That was uh, wonderful for all of us here in the studio as well. Both Michael and Owen are going to be playing in London because London is going to be hosting one of the biggest New Year celebrations outside of China uh, this Sunday. So if you'd like to see more of uh, both of them and other performers as well who are on the program, do go to Year of the Snake Festivities. They're going to be streamed online this Sunday on bbcchinese.com and also bbcukchina.com. It all kicks off at about 9.30 in the evening. Beijing time promises to be fantastic and if the talent of these two young men is anything to go by it's going to be a great night both of you it was just so lovely that you came in thank you very much and happy new year do you do? do stay with us here on